Greetings everyone, Joseph James, Steve's Google Trade.com, April 9th, 2010. Welcome to your live trading recap. Before we talk about the trades we took today, we took, uh, what, four total trades? I want to remind you guys about those three important links. There are three links if you're watching this video right now on the YouTube page. If you're not watching the YouTube page, just double click, take you right to our YouTube page, and you can see these three links. One's for our track record of 12 months, one is for our three week trial, and of course the last link takes to our blog. That blog has new articles, new videos added daily, so make sure you guys stop back to the blog. And don't forget, while you're there, guys, sign up for our, uh, our YouTube channel. Sign up for our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter. Right, everything is on that blog, guys. So you can get everything you need when it comes across every morning. Let's see here. We took two, four total trades. Uh, four for four. We got one scratch in there on the euro, as you can see, at 9:45. Other than that, though, all nice, big, strong winners here this morning on gold and crude. So that brings our weekly total here, guys. 26.70, 26.70 for the week this week. That brings our monthly total here. To 3170 for the first uh, week in one day here, so 3,000 bucks for the week for the month so far, not too bad, and we're just shy of 28,000 dollars here uh, for the year of 2010. We'll keep you guys posted the rest of the month of April. What, now, what's the most important thing that happened today? Well, today was a Friday, so we look for early close of the morning. All right, the same reason why you and I want to get out from behind our desks, go enjoy the wonderful weather we're having this time of year. It's the same reason why the rest of the traders are leaving early on Fridays. Okay, so don't trade too late in the morning on Fridays. We're going to try to get in on Fridays, get the trades we need to get done early, and then be aware things are going to start looking towards uh, you know the slow side as we get towards 11 o'clock this morning. Now, today, there wasn't much news involved. We had a 10 o'clock uh, wholesale inventories at 10. That was about it. When we woke up this morning, we saw right away the market felt very quiet. In fact, that was one of the things we noticed right away this morning was just the market just kind of felt like it was getting ready to fall asleep on us. We saw a couple hours of some pretty good price action, and then, of course, the Friday morning came to an end. Watch the dollar index for the direction. So first, we'll start with the dollar index, and then make sure we watch those first couple moves of the day. That will give you the feedback you need. Let's start first here by looking at the dollar. Now, here in the dollar, as you can see, a little bit different than we saw in previous days. Here in the dollar, we actually had some sort of trending environment going on. Now, we still had to worry about some double tops from yesterday and some previous days. As you can see here in the dollar, we marked up double tops and double bottoms with the blue lines here. You'll notice here, right, for the most of the morning here, we were resting on right here just about 9.45, 9.50, and then once we broke below that, that's when we really started to see things begin uh, to kind of move and shake on us here the rest of the market this morning. So we watched the dollar. First thing we saw in the dollar was that double bottom. We quickly saw the dollar break below that double bottom. And then once it broke below the double bottom, it stayed down here for a little while, but then quickly got sucked back up in here. And you can see what happened is now it began to kind of trickle itself right next to this trend line. Now, what do we always say? Whenever we see a market that kind of sits on those trend lines, it's always a signal of weak price action. Okay, A trend line is a very easy target for the institutional traders, all the speculators out there. So if there's nothing else going on in the market, if nobody really has any sense of direction, it's very common in a weak environment for the price to hover around a trend line, for it to hover around a, a, a big round number, such as 81 even or 82 even. And in this case, we saw exactly that, right? And that was one big concern we saw first, you know, late in this morning, was that we had the dollar here now sitting on this trend line here. Now, what that means is we've got buy pressure, sell pressure combining right there, which means that kind of combination of two forces acting against each other are now going to result in choppy price action on the rest of the marks we trade. So when we saw the dollar break below double bottoms, we had a good window of opportunity there. But it didn't last very long because it quickly got sucked back up into that trend line here. And again, choppy on the dollar, choppy on everything else. So let's see how that played out here. Now remember, we broke below this, right, what time? 940 to 950, right? So we broke out 940, 950. Let's see if that makes any sense to us later on in this presentation. Let's keep track. Next up, of course, I wanted to show you more specifically here. On the left side, here is the dollar, right? Here's your dollar index on the left side. And then you've got your crude oil on the right side, right? Now, once again, great example here. This is about 1030 after that big drop in the dollar. It got sucked back up into the into that uh, trend line we talked about, and it began going sideways. Well, look at the correlation here between the dollar and the crude. Now, obviously, here we can see right away, right, beginning first with the dollar, dollar rising, right, over here now, crude falling. Okay, so left is the dollar, right, dollar rising at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock over here on the crude, crude on the right, crude is falling, so negative correlation. Now, that's wonderful. Look 
What happens next? Sideways range on the dollar. What do you think is going to happen on the crude? Same thing, sideways range. So once again, remember, we use the dollar most effectively to tell us when to avoid taking trade. It's a great filter. Sideways dollar, sideways crude, wait for it to break out on the dollar, then the crude should also break out with some sort of conviction. All right, now, next up, here's a trade we, here's a trade we looked for on the gold today. Okay, one of the first moves of the day today, you guys, 945, 950 here on gold. And I wanted to show you guys something very important here on gold, and that was using the medium time frames. Okay, now, there's, actually, there's, there's two important things here in the snapshot. The first one is, is using medium time frames. The second one here is getting that lower low. So two things. First, the medium time frame. Signal fires off short. We come down, we break the lows, and we break the new lower low. Very important for a wave entry that we break those lower lows. Now watch. As we retrace off these lows back up into my zone, 1155, what do we see? There's that low again, right? There's that swing low. And you'll see what happened here was, was we actually could use that swing low as overhead resistance, right? Makes sense? So it pulls back up in. Here's my swing low. I'm going to bounce off that swing low, head back to the downside again. Okay, so that's the idea behind the swing low. Use that swing low here at 11.55, 11.54.7, right? Use that swing low as resistance to protect your trade. However, here's why we didn't take the trade. Look in the upper left-hand corner here. Notice where we are. 53.6. See how we were not below that trigger line? Trigger line there at 53.6. See how we just tried to break below it right there? Just tried to break below it. Couldn't get it done, though. Guys, remember, even though 99% of these rules lined up on this one, we still had to be careful because we had that support at 53.6. And if you look, follow me back to the move down here, you can see 53.6 is right here. It bounced right off it and then reversed back against us. All right, guys, so be careful. Watch those medium time frames and keep an eye on those lower lows because clearly here, a good example of where we can use.